Hi, good afternoon, everybody. We are going to discuss today Chapter 7. Chapter 7 of my new book, A Spiritual Soul Book. We're going to read through the chapter with some extra commentary live so you can get a feel what Chapter 7 is about. And if you have a copy of the book, it will always be available for reference. You could read over it. And every time you read it over, you will be absorbing some very, very deep and important concepts that relate to your identity, to your character, to your soul, to the way you express yourself, and the power you have over those aspects of your personality. Chapter 7, Effects and Effects. The effects is with an A, and the effects with an E of positive thought versus negative thought. So let's start the chapter with a quote from the previous Labavitcher Rebbe, Rabbi Yosef Yitzchok Schneerson. Incredibly powerful are thoughts and the ability to imagine. They place a person in an illusionary place as if it were really true. At that moment, the person is totally elevated from the nonsense and trivia of the corporeal. His awareness and aspirations are carried away. His thoughts are dancing, elevated in the realm of the spirit and soul, and his flesh, if it hurts, is estranged from him. So this is something that the previous Rebbe is saying in a very positive, in a very positive manner, that the world of thought can take a person to a place where they will have an experience which is elevated from this materialistic and corporeal world to the point where if he had pain on his body, he won't even feel it anymore. And that's an old trick that many of the mystics um, actually experienced when they would go through operations or different other things. And that is a way that they... um, controlled any possible pain that could have come as a result of what would otherwise be the pain of the body. The Baal Shem Tov, the Holy Baal Shem Tov said, where a person's thoughts are, that is where the person is. And this is not something, of course, that the Baal Shem Tov made up. The Baal Shem Tov didn't come to make up a new Torah, but he came, like all the other great teachers of the Jewish people, to relay and to bring to our attention the eternal and very deep principles that are in God's wisdom, the Torah. And we see this, for example, in the rules of Eruv, Eruv Tchumin, certain practice that the rabbis instituted. And in that practice, a person, he places uh, a certain amount of food for two meals at a certain location, And that location becomes the permanent residence of the person for the duration of the Shabbat, which has a lot of um, extenuating circumstances that relate to law. The bottom line is that because the person intended to make the place where he puts his meals his primary residence, we measure everything that is related to a person's primary residence from that place that the person put the meals before the Shabbat. And even if on Friday night he's in his regular house, but he can, for example, travel the distance as measured from those two meals because that's where he intended to make his permanent residence for the duration of the Shabbat. Whatever the case, without getting too complicated into technicalities, the Baal Shem Tev brought to our attention something which is a very simple law, and that is we see in Jewish law that where a person's thoughts are, that's where it is considered to be his actual identity. He's actually there in his identity. The Zohar says the great work of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai that gives us a little glimpse into mysticism, into the deeper spiritual dimensions of godliness, Adam Ihu Machshava, a person, you know what a person really is? 
It's not his physical flesh. A person, he is his thoughts. What is a man and where is he? It, he is in his thoughts. Through thoughts, the soul of a person, his feelings and his life are drawn and expressed. Strength and weakness in a person's life are all from his thoughts. Incredibly powerful is what we feed our thoughts, our thinking process. Thoughts is like a funnel. Just as through a funnel, water is given shape and it is directed to certain destinations, the water is the substance. Your soul and who you are, that's the real meat. That's the real I. But it's so intrinsically and inherently attached with thought that it has to express itself through the funnel of, of thought. Thought is what gives shape and directs the identity of a person. It is through the garment and funnel of thought that the soul streams and is revealed. When a person's thoughts adopt a certain shape and direction, of course, your thoughts don't have any physical direction or any physical shape, but we're just borrowing a an idea, a metaphor, from a physical vessel that gives shape to whatever you put in it. The same is also with thought. Thought is like a vessel. Depending on the type of vessel you bring to the table, to your mind, that is what's going to determine the type of experience, the type of life experience you are going to have. Thoughts that emphasize optimism and happiness will bring the soul to those places, to the places of optimism and happiness. The soul is a spark of God, and it has the potential for infinity. It's up to your choices to decide where to take the infinite experience of the soul. So if you insert positive thought and thoughts of optimism, then that's exactly where you're going to channel and direct the feeling and your life, your actual life is going to be one that's going to have optimism and strength and happiness in it. Thoughts of the opposite nature force the soul and all the aspects of a person to acquiesce to that negative pattern. As we know, when a person has negative thoughts of anxiety, you bring stress, you can actually get a physical stroke, get a heart attack, a panic attack, worse things. Some people say and claim that it causes even cancer, messes up the entire system. That's how powerful thought is on a person's actual life force that it'll have that type of a very, very powerful impact. As we explained previously, the influence of thought on the soul is even greater than speech and action. The other garments of the soul, because of its closeness with and constant attachment to the soul, thought will have that kind of an impact on the most deepest areas and aspects of the eye, of the person's life force. And therefore, when a person immerses himself into godly words, godly inspiration, for example, when a person is reading the book of Psalms from King David, King David was a spark of Adam. King David was from the tribe of Judah, Yehuda, from which Mashiach, the ultimate redemption, comes from. The expressions of King David the sweet singer of Israel, is extremely powerful. What King David expressed through his own thoughts and words is an expression of his soul, which is from such a lofty, powerful place. So when a person immerses himself into those words, 
or just in general, words of the Torah, which are godly and very powerful words, these are the ultimate thoughts that a person can place within his vessel in order to draw the deepest of wisdom and light. And they are particularly beneficial for influencing, molding, and directing the soul for the good. Because Torah is one with God. Torah is an expression of God. So when a person is thinking, and he's speaking, but when he is thinking holy words, so then he's putting his soul in that place. When we talk about today mindfulness and meditation, you don't have to have any kind of uh, mantra. Mm, oh, mm, something more powerful that's going to really have an impact on improving and on elevating is say, Mizmor Lesoida, a song of thanks. Horio Lashem Kol Haaretz, the entire world lifts up its expression of praise to you, O God. And you're going to start feeling elevated like clouds. You're going to dance on the clouds, with the clouds. When a person thinks godly thoughts, it will surround and encompass the soul with holiness. And this will trigger from within the soul a shine, an infinite light that knows no bounds. This will cause the soul, which is a spark of God, to bring out the best and the strongest goodness from the soul. As I mentioned a moment ago, the soul is a spark of God. And that's how you have access to this most powerful elements of energy that is already implanted within you. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, I am reading from a spiritual soul book, chapter 7. And you could be reading these exact same words. If you buy yourself a book on Amazon, a spiritual soul book, look it up and it could be yours. All this wisdom and all this strength. Thoughts that are the opposite of holiness and godliness will cause tremendous damage by stifling and strangling the soul. Because the soul by its very nature, it wants to exude light and happiness and infinite expression. That's what the soul is by its very nature. But when we place within our mind and within our thought ideas that are the opposite of holiness and godliness, this becomes a source of great strangulation and constriction and therefore unhappiness to the soul, to my soul, to my feelings of self. It will be hurt by those thoughts. The choice to think unworthy, negative thoughts will shift the soul away from its light and strength to a place of darkness, God forbid. For a soul, the positive influence of a good thought and a finer speech and action is much greater than the negative influence of a bad thought. Because there is a rule, much greater is the measure of goodness over the measure of punishment. This good is the nature of a person's soul. And therefore, you are being compatible and working with this soul, and that's why it feels so good. These lifter-uppers and all these memes that you see on Facebook and everybody wants to be positive... But for the most part, they're all superficial and empty. But when you feed your mind with words and thoughts of substance and depth that are true, this is exactly compatible with the soul. And the soul feels a sense of freedom and expression through those thoughts and through those words. And therefore much greater is the measure of goodness over the measure of punishment. When a person involves himself in something positive, it's always going to accomplish so much more than when the person is involved in something negative. 
because there he is working against nature. And therefore, the results of that effort is always going to be a lot more limited and narrower than when a person is doing something positive and good, which is the exact nature and compatible with the soul and with the way God created the world. A small but positive light will chase away much darkness from a large dark room. You come into a big room and you put on a little match. You know how much darkness all of a sudden disappears? Much more than just the space of the little light. Because that is the essence of existence, light. And all of a sudden it awakens the light that is all around within the darkness. Positive, inspiring thoughts are inherently more powerful than the darkness that is caused by negative thoughts. But you got to hold on to those positive thoughts. You can't just light for 10 seconds or for 5 seconds and match and then take it out and say, I was told that the light chases away a lot of darkness and all of a sudden I'm back in the darkness. Well, what did you do with that positive thought? You are now giving place and as the expression goes, you are now allowing rent-free all the negative thoughts back again into your brain so you have darkness. But if you hold on even to a small positive thought and you keep on repeating that and and keeping it in your brain, you are going to address and deal with darkness that is there way, way more proportionately for the one little thought of goodness than any of the darkness that gets chased away as a result (coughs) of that one good positive thought. The more we accustom and train ourselves to think positive thoughts, the more we train our soul to flow in a positive direction and cleanse our soul of the negative effects that the bad garments have had on our soul. The more we consciously repeat and plant positive thoughts and repeat it again and again so it becomes a habit. We are chasing away the darkness and we are encouraging and developing the trend of the positive aspects within the soul to keep on expressing and flowing so that it comes natural so that when you're just driving in this car or when you're going shopping the natural fall back feeling and sense of self will be positive. But that's something that you need to work on to make sure that it becomes a trend and a habit within yourself. There's a story with the Baal Shem Tov that he was once with his students at a Friday night table and he told them all to close their eyes. That was a certain kind of Uh, 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 usual practice amongst the students of the Baal Shem Tov with their teacher, the Baal Shem Tov. And when they closed their eyes, they saw all of a sudden an ox that was sitting by the Shabbat table. Later on, when they opened up their eyes, the Baal Shem Tov explained to them that at that place, there was sitting a fellow, a gentleman, who was so involved in the meat that he was eating, the meat from an ox, and he put himself so much into the enjoyment of the meat of the ox that he actually created an energy and an aura of an ox because that's where his mind was involved in. So he pulled himself into that reality, into that, into that truth. So that's chapter 7, for you ladies and gentlemen if you'd like to discuss more about this chapter which has so much information you'll be able to do it 
underneath in the comment section. And I encourage anybody and everybody to ask, to discuss, and I will do my best to be part of that conversation. Have a great day, and I hope you will get the greatest of guidance and light and strength from Chapter 7 of the Spiritual Soul Book.